Patricia Gross. Welcome to Passion Time. I'm here with Joyce Sewing. She is with the Houston Chronicle, the fashion editor, but she writes about all kinds of things. She writes about fitness, about celebrities, about what to wear, beautiful things. And we're also going to talk about joy because she, she does talk about joy a lot. So thank you so much, Joy, thank you. for joining us. Thank you. And I'm going to ask you the first question, which everybody gets, which is how did you find your passion and how are you living your passion? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> um, I think I found it probably out of the womb. Um, wow. Yeah. So well, mama was passionate. Yes. Okay. yes. And, and probably about three or four years old, I knew that I wanted to be a journalist. I don't oh. know even if I knew that term, but I enjoyed look, looking at my parents' newspapers and just kind of imagine myself writing whatever I saw down on the paper and everything that I have done has led to that point. So. And you're very curious too, right? Yeah, because I, I mean, I notice, I notice all the different things that you do yeah. and that you care about. And you're also passionate about dogs. Oh god. <laughs> I saw that. So tell me about that. Cuz you I think you have a blog about your dogs yeah. or, or Instagram. You know social media is a crazy thing. Yes. It allows you to be passionate about something and no one ever see your face. So I have, so I have uh, two rescue boxers. I got wow. one actually on assignment while I was at um, covering a designer and ended up leaving with a uh, a little girl boxer. Oh my god. And then because she was a lot of work, I got a second one. So and So now they love each they other. They love each other. I put them on Instagram. They have probably more followers than I do. Wow. And they get more likes on their photos than I do, so it's just it's actually kind of fun. And you are an expert in social media, right? You, you've learned social media. Mm -hmm. Tell me, tell me what the latest. I know Facebook Live. You, yeah. you did a Facebook Live. You've yes. done three. Tell me about that and and why you think it works so well right now. Well, one thing of uh, being a journalist and being in social media, it's kind of changed the way we operate. Absolutely. Um, it puts us in the center of the story instead of just being kind of a little bit voyeuristic and writing about the story. So we're in the conversation, and that's what I do enjoy about social media. So I, I do everything. I do Snapchat, uh, Instagram, Facebook Live, Facebook. I have two. I have three Facebook pages. Um, I do Twitter. I've done Periscope. I, I've when done them all. When do you find time to do all this? Well, uh, yeah, that, that does it help your work. I and do. How does it help? I do believe it helps because one thing that. Um, it's different is that we are branding ourselves and in terms of in, with that people are driven back to our website or reading our stuff or reading our post and it kind of gives us a um, credibility. Personality yeah, too, personality right? and, and makes us an expert in the field that we're covering which right. we do need. Well, I've heard that, that in journalism you have to create your own brand. Right. It's separate from the institution that you work for, it's very important for you to have your own brand right. and that's again because of social media. Right. Now one of the things I've read about you too is that you care a lot about joy <laughs> and being happy. The feeling. Uh, yeah <laughs> and, and I want to know a little bit more about that because I think you know I think that is really something we don't often think about. We, we go through life you know doing what we're supposed to do, get married, have kids, work, 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 uh, buy a car, buy a house. And then we forget about the little things that just make us happy and joyful. Mm -hmm. Well, this this it's called the I use the hashtag Year of Joy, and it's Year of Joy. Uh -huh. okay. And it started um, at the end of uh, the end of 2015, and I just got tired of feeling. Um, beat down and working too hard and working all the time and just drained emotionally, drained physically, spiritually, everything. And I had been reading, I read a book by Gabrielle Bernstein and I also read Shonda Rhimes who is the creator of, of uh, yeah, Grey's Anatomy, Grace Anatomy and all, which I love, yeah, and Scandal, Scandal and, all of yeah. She wrote a book called The Year of Yes. Mm -hmm. And after I finished those books, I, I realized that I had the power to make my situation more happy. Okay. It wasn't anything, any kind of external situation, any um, external flu influence. And I just decided, you know, I'm going to do this year of joy. And so that meant everything that made me happy. So returning to the things like I enjoy salsa dancing. I went salsa dancing for the first time in 10 years. Oh my years. God, you what know, a great I, idea. I, I, did, I took a trip for my birthday, which I usually don't. I went to visit a friend in San Francisco. Oh my God. And just when I made that proclamation out loud to myself, it seemed like my world kind of changed. Everything wow. I've been doing has been um, pretty joyful and uh, it's been kind of great. I, I got a, an award, a community award last weekend. Well, congratulations was, on you. that. Tell me about that award. It was called. It's called the Audrey H. Lawson um, Impact Award, yes. and it's for Audrey Lawson, who was the, one of the uh, um, founders of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church yes, with yes. Reverend Lawson. Yes, yes. Marilyn Lawson. Yes, yeah. and um, 
they award ten women who have done uh, made um, strides in the community and helped the community, and oh, I was one of them, and it was pretty how exciting. Wonderful. Yeah, my family and my friends them. came, and my coworkers. It was great. That's so. great. Well, you, I'm sure you deserve it. And Thank you. you know, another thing that that happens with joy, I also, also think that gratitude is is such an important right. part of being joyful, right? It is. And you seem to share. Uh, what you're happy about, and right. I think it, in a way that's a way of being grateful. Yeah, uh, and I think when you when you say thank you out loud and thank you to people, it just comes back to you. Oh, times absolutely. Yeah. What goes around yeah, comes it around. Does. It really is. Um, okay, so we we recently lost Prince, and oh, I know that you were a big fan, yes. and, and you I understand you went to all his concerts. Yeah. I love Prince too. Purple Rain, my yeah. gosh. Uh, and you know, we're, I'm a child of the 80s. Mm -hmm. You're probably born in. <laughs> <laughs> right. But I really, okay. but I really <laughs> got into Prince because uh -huh. I was mature enough, right? Uh -huh. But um, tell me what what legacy you think he left, and why it's so. I, I, you know, it really upsets me that we've lost Michael Jackson mm -hmm. and Prince at such a young age, and these kids were kids. Mm -hmm. These men were geniuses. Right. Musical. There's no one like them. Right. You can't compare. No. Right? Right. So what did you think when you heard? When I heard that Prince died, that um, one, it, I didn't really believe it, and two, it just hit home because there's so few artists who have really captured everything they were going through politically, exactly. socially, you know, culturally. He's talked about everything in his music from, again, the politics and religion and sexuality. I mean, he's touched them all. And yes. I think because of that, you've seen this outpouring of love for Prince that, you know, you, we really didn't see before while he was alive, but you can see now how, how much he spoke what to What impact everybody. he had. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and I think that uh, on top of that, you know, a lot of stories come out, and uh, there's going to be so many stories yeah. around it. Whether was it Percocet, was it yeah. painkillers, was you know? But he was uh, Jehovah Witness, mm -hmm. so he probably was leading a very clean, natural life. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, the man left a legacy yeah. of, of incredible lyrics, music, and 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 I, I, you know, I'm like when I remember these songs, it takes me back to that time mm -hmm. of my life, and. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a wonderful time. The 80s were great. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you were born in the 80s, no, but the 80s were awesome. <laughs> yeah, <they> were great. <laughs> All right, Beyonce is someone that you know pretty well. I understand mm -hmm. you were friends. So tell me about that friendship and, wow, <laughs> lemonade is okay. ooh, yeah, very Le controversial, uh, right? You know, let me say that I can't call Beyonce a friend, friend right? Yeah, no, I know her family. You can't call her. Yeah, you can't like, text hey, her. No, I can't do that. Uh, Hi. Uh, but I do know the family, uh -huh. and I've um, spent a lot of time with her mother, and I've done a, a number of inter interviews and events with um, the family and their, and, her, and Tina Knowles. So mm -hmm. they have been very kind to me, and I um, I appreciate how they have kind of grown as a family and grown with uh, Beyonce's career. It's just been pretty amazing to watch. And the the latest album, Lemonade, is getting a lot of controversial yeah. uh, critique, but I, I'm wondering what your thoughts are on, have you listened to the album? I have not listened to it. Okay, I have and not you, have you seen the video? Yeah, I saw a, a part, a portion of the video. But I think this, people are going to make inferences about whatever they want, I mean, to believe. And she's an artist. She's creates. She can create characters. She can create stories. And you know, it might not be what all these rumors are. It might be something else. Or yeah, know. I think I think it's yeah. I think it's probably something they yeah. they worked on together. Very smart people. Right. Very. Uh, they're commercially driven, and they right. they know what they're doing. I, yeah. I feel. Um, I want to ask you since you've interviewed so many different celebrities, Stella McCartney, and mm -hmm. I want to ask you what are some of the most interesting interviews you've had. And some of the lessons you've learned from all these famous people. Well, I'll, I'll address the first, last part first. Um, one of the lessons is that they're people, and most of the time when I've experienced celebrity and it gets all dramatic and everything, it's usually the people around them, not them, and not the celebrity right. themselves. Usually they're just regular people. Stella McCartney was a regular person who just wanted, you know, some nuts and olives at um, at the restaurant where we were eating, and it just, I mean, just. It, I think so that surprises you. Yeah, you're yeah. expecting. Yeah, you, them to be a, a lot of times you expect this this air of superiority or grandness or just you know a lot of drama. And usually with the, most of the celebrities, it's not. It's usually the people surrounding them. Interesting. Yeah. And what is one of the most inter interesting interviews you've ever had? Oh gosh, 
Okay. Sometimes it's I, not a celebrity. Well, you know, um, if I had to have to pick celebrity, it would be, it would be two. One was Iman, mm -hmm. um, the supermodel Lovely. who was married Lovely. to um, David Bowie. Mm -hmm. I thought she was going to be very dramatic and very, I'm Iman. She wasn't. She was very down to earth. She was very funny. She talked about how she didn't initially like David Bowie at the at, when they first met. They met on a blind date. Wow. And um, their hair, her hair stylist set them up. Wow, uh -huh. interesting. And um, and then the other one was Oscar De La Renta, and I interviewed mm. him three times, uh, three wow. or four times over. What did you find interesting about him? He was the most enchanting man. He really? was absolutely enchanting. And mm -hmm. a lot of times when I interview people, I don't ask them about fashion because I can read about that, I can read about their inspiration, but I like to talk to them about things that really touch them. And he talked about adopting his son, Moises, from a Dominican orphanage and said that he was the darkest child and the most sickly and no one wanted him. I and then we, s we were sat in a hallway and Oscar de la Renta started to cry about the love of his, he said, I love that boy so much. Oh, And those are kind of stories I really like. Sure. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you so much, Joy Sewing. If people want to read uh, about Joy, they can read the Houston Chronicle, but also you have, give me some of your website. Okay. So your website will tell you where to reach her. <laughs> you can go to joysewing.com. Okay. I, I'm trying to, I, I started in my own website, so I'm trying to put put things And up you'll there. find her dogs there if you want to see Yes. Dogs. Uh, my dogs are on Instagram, Ava the Boxer. Ava the Boxer. Um, and then I'm Joy Sewing on Twitter and Instagram All and right. Facebook too. Thank you so much for coming Thank to you. A Passion Time. And join us next week. And don't forget also to listen to our podcast at factorm.com. See you next week. Las puertas